We scaled this client from 23% of their revenue from email to over 46% of their revenue from email. And it was just a matter of months. And we've done similar things for clients like this, like this, and like this. But while 40% of revenue attributed to email may look really good for us, is it actually a good thing? It's above the 30% that a lot of people say you should be getting from email, so that's a good thing, right? Well, I'm gonna dive into just that in today's video, and also how to scale your email marketing so that it is consistently contributing at least 30% of your overall revenue. Now, this is gonna take some time though. It's not gonna be easy, so if you're looking for a super easy way to make money, you can go ahead and just skip this video. But if you decide to stick around, we're gonna run through two different things. The first is what you should actually be targeting to get in terms of percentage revenue from email. And the second is how to build a machine that is consistently generating 30% of your revenue or more from email. Now I'm gonna pull back the curtain and show you exactly the flows, the campaigns, and the strategies that we use for our clients to consistently generate them hundreds of thousands of dollars per month from email marketing. So let's dive in. Okay, so the first thing we wanna dive into is just getting clear on what is good and what is bad with respect to attributed revenue from email. But before we even get to that though, we need to understand how attribution actually works on platforms like Klaviyo. Attribution is simply just if the email is taking credit for a purchase. Now, I'll be the first one to tell you, if you rely on the attribution of every platform you advertise on, you're gonna end up with like $250,000 in attributed revenue when your actual revenue and the money you collected in the bank was only $127,000. It makes zero sense. But the thing is, every platform wants a piece of the pie. The thing we do is encourage our clients to look at email as just a piece of the puzzle, just like any other platform. If you try to make sense of attribution on any platform or try to combine them all, it's just a headache. Anyways, by default, Klaviyo's attribution is actually five days. This means that if you send out an email and a customer opens your email on day one, opens it again on day three, and then comes back and makes a purchase on day four, that purchase will be attributed to the email that was sent. Okay, so now that we've got that dialed, what is good and what is bad from a percentage of email perspective? We typically target 30% of revenue coming through Klaviyo or email marketing. Now, there's a few reasons why this might actually vary though. The main reason is just the season you're in with your business, meaning are you increasing your ad spend or are you decreasing your advertising or marketing spend? If you're increasing your spending, your revenue attributed to email is naturally gonna drop. If you're decreasing your spend, your revenue attributed to email is naturally gonna rise. Basically, a higher percentage of revenue from email marketing might look good, but it actually might mean that you're just not spending enough on advertising on other platforms, AKA you're relying too heavily on email marketing. So rule of thumb here is more does not equal better beyond 30% of your revenue from email. That said, if a brand is doing less than 30% of their revenue from email, there's typically a lot of untapped potential. If they're doing between 20 and 30% of their revenue, they usually have the basics set up, but you usually need to scale campaigns and likely need some of the more advanced flows. If they're doing less than 20%, it usually means that they're missing some of the advanced flows and some of the basic flows. And if they're doing less than 10%, send help. They probably have virtually nothing set up. You need the basics, you need campaigns, and you need just to increase consistency overall for your email marketing. Now, this isn't always the case, but we typically apply this as a general rule of thumb. Okay, cool. So we've got a target. The target is 30% of revenue from email. Now there's five key steps to creating a money printing machine with email marketing. The first step might seem like a very simple one, but I'm gonna tell you why it's not as simple as you might think and why it's one of the most important, if not the most important steps in this process. Building your list. Without a list, you can't send campaigns. Without growing and feeding a list, you can't have automations. Growing your list is absolutely crucial to your email marketing success. And we typically will start this with a pop-up or some degree of a sign-up form. Now, I'm not gonna tell you how to go and create a sign-up form in this video, but you should be targeting a four to 8% opt-in rate 
for your signup forms. Depending on the industry and depending on your brand, some industries naturally just have higher opt-in rates, but four to 8% should be your target. Keep testing until you achieve this, and then keep testing after that. The more people who sign up, the more people you get into the welcome series, and then the more people you are able to add to your list, and the more people on your list, the more money you will make. Well, sort of. The second piece of the puzzle that most people forget about is actually cleaning the list. It's not about the size of your list, but it's about how you use it. But seriously, if you have a 100,000 person email list, but you barely contact them and 50% of them haven't open, clicked, or otherwise engaged with any of your emails of the past 15 that you've sent, do you really want these people on your list anyways? The answer should be a resounding no. This is list cleaning, and basically it involves cleaning and removing unengaged or inactive profiles from your list. Now, in order to clean your list, you need to do a couple things. Number one is create a segment of unengaged profiles, and number two is suppress those unengaged profiles. So what I'd recommend doing before we go even any further is just make sure you have a sunset flow and a win back flow if you haven't already set those up. Now, list cleaning is hella boring and it is the least sexy part about email marketing, but it's also one of the most important for a number of reasons. Reason number one, it will save you money. If you're using a platform like Klaviyo, you're paying per active profile. And the thing is, if you don't clean the list, Klaviyo isn't gonna automatically remove those people who are unengaged. You need to do this manually. And depending on the size of your list and the frequency of your sending, we do list cleaning either every quarter or every six months. The bigger the list, the more frequent the cleaning. Now, the second list cleaning is so important is actually far more important than the first. List cleaning is crucial to maintain strong deliverability. It'll help you reduce your unsubscribe rates, increase your open rates, and increase your click rates, which in turn help to improve your sender reputation. Your sender reputation is basically just your reputation in the eyes of ESPs or email service providers. Now, ESPs use spam rates, unsubscribe rates, etc., to determine if your emails are actually classified as spam and if you should just be going to the spam folder. Having a lot of unengaged people in your list increases this risk to getting flagged. So the first thing you need to do is identify these unengaged profiles. We do this by creating a segment of unengaged people. Now, typically that's gonna look something like this. The condition is a person has received an email at least 10 times overall time, asterisk by the 10. Filter is and opened email zero times in the last 90 to 180 days and then and clicked email zero times in the last 90 or 180 days. And finally, this person is not suppressed. These people should be added to your sunset flow. And if you don't know how to set up a sunset flow, just let me know and I'll share some resources on that. But depending on your frequency of sending, the asterisks I added for has received an email at least 10 times may vary slightly. Higher frequency usually means you should use a higher number of emails received. So instead of 10, you might wanna use 15. Now, this should not be so high that it, it includes your lowest engaged profiles. You wanna keep those people and see if you can get them engaged. And an easy way to determine this is just clone a segment, basically that segment that I mentioned, that, and then increase the number of emails by one each time until you see a dip in the size of that segment. Here's a brief image from Klaviyo showing you exactly how you can do that. So you've made the unengaged segment, but Klaviyo won't automatically remove this segment from your sending. Once these people have been added to the segment, that should be the trigger for the sunset flow. Now the sunset flow is basically just like a breakup flow. It's basically saying like, hey, we haven't heard from you in a while. Are you still interested or should we just unsubscribe you? They're sent as pure text emails so that they have the best chance of getting to the inbox. At the end of the flow, you update the profile property to create unengaged equals true, like this. This will tag people as unengaged. And then you wanna create a segment for unengaged equals true, kinda of like this. And once you've done that, you'll wanna export it as a CSV file and then upload it into the suppressed profiles in Klaviyo. Now, really important here, make sure you suppress versus delete these profiles. Deleting the profiles removes all data completely. Suppressing will keep the data, but no emails will be sent to them and you also won't pay for them anymore. So we should always suppress, not delete, 
because you won't get billed for them. And suppressed profiles can also become unsuppressed if they re-engage in the future, i.e. they sign up for the welcome series again, or they uh, decide to opt in for email at the checkout or something like that. Okay, cool. So now that we've covered the really boring part, let's jump into the fun stuff. Step three. Since you're working on building your list from step one and you're cleaning your list from step two, the next step we always leverage for our clients is setting up flows and automations. Now there's four core flows that you wanna set up right out the gate. These four have the biggest impact on revenue because they are either number one, high volume, meaning a lot of people go through them, or two, they're high intent, meaning they're close to the checkout process. Now the first flow should be one of your top two flows in terms of revenue, the welcome series. Now, before you click away because you're like, oh yeah, like I already have the welcome series, hold your horses. Most brands have a welcome series that is shit. It's underdeveloped and it is not structured very well. And it's not producing anywhere near as much as it could be in terms of revenue. Most brands welcome series looks something like this. Hey, here's 10% off. Hey, do you want to buy our stuff? It's 10% off. Here's 10% off. Hey, do you want to buy our stuff again? It, it's 10% off. Buy it, buy it now. Same email, three different times, and it seems needy. For starters, this is just no bueno. We want to make sure that our marketing message changes throughout the series. Otherwise, we're just peppering people with the same message three different times. Beyond that, we usually start with four to six emails in the welcome series because it works. Here's what it typically looks like for us. So people are added to the welcome series off the back of getting added to the newsletter from the pop-up. So we start with number one, just delivering the opt-in offer and just welcoming people to the brand. The second email is then a brand mission or a story time with the founder, along with just a simple reminder to use that 10% off discount. The third email promotes some social proof and testimonials. Uh, the fourth email will highlight some of the top selling products, and with the fifth email, we try to create a little bit more urgency by limiting access to the welcome discount and letting people know that it's their last chance to use it. Email six, we typically will have a quiz to see what people are actually interested in so we can send them things that are actually relevant for them. By structuring the flows this way, we're handling people's objections and changing up the content so that people don't just get bored about what they're receiving from us. Now, there's a full video on exactly how to build the welcome series, but this should give you a good jumping off point. The second flow that is crucial is the next step in the customer journey, the browse abandonment flow. Typically, this is gonna be two emails, but sometimes we'll add an additional two for non-purchasers, and the trigger is just simply when people have viewed a product. People at this stage have checked out a product, but they may or may not know what they actually want. We wanna make sure that we're excluding people who have added to cart, started checkout, or placed an order here, because if they've done any of these things, there's different flows for those different stages. So this is a bit of a lighter flow. The first email we send here is just a simple reminder. And the second one pivots a little bit. Since they didn't make it past the product page, that's telling us something. Maybe they just weren't interested in the product. So for the second email, we typically highlight some of the best sellers and some of the reviews for the best sellers to see if we can interest them in a different product. Our goal here isn't to sell them on the thing, it's to get them interested enough to add to cart. And sometimes, depending on how aggressive we wanna be with the browse abandonment flow, we may add another two emails. We typically just have another reminder type email plus an incentive, and then we'd have a final email with an incentive and reviews. I typically just start with two emails in this flow and then scale if things are really going well, and depending on how aggressive you wanna be. The third flow that is part of the core flows is the abandoned checkout flow. Now this flow should be one of the top two revenue producing flows among with the welcome series. People at this stage were super close to purchasing, but they didn't purchase for one of these reasons. They determined the product just wasn't right for them. They don't trust you shipping costs or time was either too expensive or too long or four they determined it was just too expensive now for the most part brands almost exclusively focus on the last objection with a barrage of discounts something like uh here's 10 percent off like check out now oh how about 15 percent off no okay how about 20 percent off what about if we just pay you to take our product for us it gets silly and honestly it just devalues the brand and it doesn't even hit on the objections. 
So this flow is triggered by someone who is hitting the checkout page. Side note here, just make sure these people aren't also added to the newsletter, or if they are, that you have the right exclusions in place so they're not getting the welcome series and the abandoned checkout flow at the same time. I've seen this mistake countless times. Now, we typically start with three to four emails here and then build up to six as they start popping off. The first email in the flow is just a simple reminder. Sometimes life just happens. Their kid runs in, a dog runs in, and people just need a simple reminder. Email two often aims to handle a few more of the potential objections and then build some trust by highlighting some customer reviews of customers just like them. Email three will typically build on this and hit on objections they might be having. Now, if someone's purchased before, we stop here. But if they haven't, this is where you can try to combat that pricing objection. Typically, this is like a last resort type of thing. We provide them with an incentive to purchase in email four. And then in email five, we create urgency behind that incentive just making sure that people know it's only for a limited time. It's not forever. Email six is a really cool one, and this is almost always just gonna be a customer service check-in. Basically, like something along the lines of like, hey, noticed you didn't check out yet. Is there anything we can help you out with? Okay, so we're ripping through these flows, and if you want greater detail on any of them, just check out my channel. There's a review of each one of these flows and exactly how to set them up, and it goes into a lot more detail. Now, you'll notice all of these are pre-purchase flows, meaning they happen before someone actually makes a purchase. The last flow in the core four is the thank you series. Now, the thank you series has a few objectives here. The first is super simple. Thank people for their support. The second is to build up hype and excitement about people receiving their product. And the third, and honestly, most overlooked, is just to make sure people actually achieve their desired result from your product. This is where we have consumption or product care tips. Make sure they actually achieve the thing they want to achieve. P.S. We also always want to split up people who have purchased once versus twice versus more than twice. It just makes the experience seem a heck of a lot more authentic. Okay, so that was step three, getting those automations set up. And once we've got that locked and loaded, the next piece we wanna focus on is establishing a good campaign cadence and just building out a campaign calendar so that you know what you're sending and when. Now for some brands, campaigns are gonna make up most of their email marketing revenue. And for others, it might be a smaller portion compared to flows. It really varies from brand to brand, but also depends on the size and the engagement of your list. Just before we dive into the campaigns we run for our clients, one of the biggest pitfalls we see brands make is just batching and blasting their entire list with promotional content day in and day out. Now, you gotta do what works for your brand. So if promotions are what works, that's fine. But you just don't want to be batching and blasting every single person on your list every single time. People will go numb. And beyond that, you just don't wanna send only promotional emails. This leads to super low engagement and ultimately lower revenue from your email marketing efforts. The first thing you wanna do before you even send a campaign is just determine who you're sending to. Keep the who in mind when you're scripting your emails out and you're planning them out. This is where segmentation comes into play. Now, there's a 30 minute video that I recorded where I review the ins and outs of segmentation. So if you wanna learn a little bit more about segmentation, go ahead and check that out. It will help you tremendously, I promise. But keeping it really simple here and just simplifying it to the max, you wanna to speak to the right people at the right time with the right message. That is email marketing and that's just marketing. So what you need to consider is who are the right people to receive this campaign? When is the right time to send them? Both from a day and hour perspective, but also based on their recency and frequency of engagement. And then the third piece is just, what is the right message? Now, once you know who you're sending to, you need to determine what types of emails you actually want to send. Here's some of our favorites that generate our clients a ridiculous amount of money. Number one is the product spotlight email. This is basically just highlighting why a certain product is so great. Number two is the problem meets solution email. This is where we present and agitate a problem that people are having and then present our product as a solution. 
Number three is a bestseller email. This is pretty self-explanatory. Number four is a blog or value-based email. This is basically just sharing information that would actually be valuable to subscribers. And this is distinctly different than a product spotlight. It should not be peddling your product at all. And then finally, just promos. Again, pretty self-explanatory. What you want to be left with is a campaign calendar that has varying content at different times to different people so that people remain engaged. They don't go numb to your messaging. Okay, so if you've done steps one to four correctly, now you can look at scaling. And here's what scaling with email marketing means. With automations, it means building out more flows or automations, i.e. the abandoned cart, not the abandoned checkout flow, the cross-sell flows, upsell flows, review flows, win-back flows. And it also means building upon current flows and automations, i.e. just adding more to them. Now with campaigns, it means sending to people more frequently, sending different types of campaigns, and then also increasing segmentation. Anyways, I hope this video really helped you out. And if it did, please feel free to like and subscribe. And if you do have an e-com brand doing at least $50,000 a month in revenue, and you want help improving your profitability with email marketing and SMS, I invite you to apply below. Thanks so much and have a great day.